Hey everyone, welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. Uh, right, before we get into all this, please subscribe. Click the button, doesn't cost anything. Just click the button, subscribe. It helps us out greatly. Uh, and please go to that pedal show store and buy some merch. It's how we fund the show and we greatly appreciate it. Indeed, indeed. Uh, so Mick recently did his new pedal board for 2024. Uh, we have some gigs coming up that we're getting ready for. So I thought I'd do my updated board for this year. <laughs> And um, I haven't gone simplified. You I've gone the opposite direction. Yeah, Dan's gone the opposite. What you can't see on the floor, in addition to all of this, are two expression pedals. Can I lift the lid? Yes, absolutely. I think it's always right to ask if you can lift a man's lid. And um, maybe we'll do some uh, guts shots to show you in a bit more detail about what's in there. Okay, uh, what's the inspiration then, Dan? The inspiration, we have some gigs coming up. Uh, Mr. Andy Timmons is coming over again, and we are very excited. Uh, we're going to go and do some dates with Andy. Not the least, we're playing at the Cavern, uh, which is going to be awesome. I'm so Cavern excited Club. about that. The Cavern Club, yeah. So that's great. It's a lifelong dream of Andy's. He's doing this Beatles pilgrimage, and he's recording at Abbey Road and stuff when he's here. Anyway, we're going to do some gigs with him again. And... Part of the inspiration for this is the board we did uh, recently for Jack um, when he said, I want to get a board together that does everything. Jack Griffiths. Jack Griffiths, a uh, beautiful guitar player, wonderful human. Uh, it's a pity about his uh, physique and his yeah. appearance is just yeah, a yeah. total it's a shame. disaster. It's a shame. It's a, sh it's a shame. Otherwise, <laughs> bag him. So, and his average guitar player. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Flapping around. His awful personality. <laughs> Terrible. Just, I mean, it's just, yeah. But he's got no, a lovely pedal board. Literally nothing going for him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Look, just, you know, Jack, wow, what an amazing guitar player and stuff. So anyway, he asked me to put a, a board for him that's going to cover all of his bases for a long time to come. And this is something that I've wanted to do for a while. And I thought, what do I need to do every gig for me for the foreseeable, you know, so I can just plug in. Until next week. And Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple of prerequisites for me. Even if I go to a little blues jam thing or, you know, if I'm going to sit in with anyone, my... My minimum, yeah, this is me. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll okay. sit up the back next right. to the drummer. Okay. Um, if I'm going to do anything of, of note, yeah, shall yeah, we yeah, say. Yeah. If, it's a, if it's a performance exactly. that requires you to play a significant barrage of material. Barrage, Indeed. Barrage. Uh, Nigel Barrage. Uh, <laughs> Canon. Uh, anyway, My yeah. barrage band. A, a, a significant amount of material. Yep. Yeah, so so I wanted to be able to, you know, to have something that's going to cover all my bases. So I wonder what the settings are. Amps. You may remember I, was, we, I wanted to do uh, find an amp that paired beautifully with the mattress. And we settled on the Baseman 2x12 uh, reissue. It's a custom shop amp from 2000-ish, and it's called a bass breaker. Nothing to do with the modern bass breakers. It is a 59 tweed basement reissue in a 2x12 cab. That's it. Yeah. With Celestian Vintage 30s, weirdly. Yeah. But I love it. It sounds wonderful. It sounds fantastic. And the Matchless, my forever amp. I just love that thing. So I've got those two amps, and I'm running, I'm running in stereo. Nothing wet dry at all. I yes. Well, stereo wet dry. It's, on, it's all there. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's start going through it. Uh, Just we'll put up a diagram here so you can, if you need to refer back to it, here it is to begin with, and we'll maybe show it again in part throughout the video. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's have a listen to uh, the Matchless first of all. A guitar straight to amplifier. <laughs> Yes, sir. Have you cleaned your volume pot? Um, no, but I have played this guitar more recently and I've been doing oh, right. this a lot. Yeah. Um, so it it does do that, I find, with the wiper. If you just it wears keep, clean. It just wears clean. 
<laughs> so that's the, mas- the mashless on its own <laughs> and then uh, the fender on its own. And when you hear them together... So that's the sound of the two amps together. Now, the the Fender, it's got well, the bottom and top and big and chimey. The matches sort of sits in the middle. Or would you think it's the other way around? I'm hearing it slightly the other way around, but the microphones will tell the... the oh, okay. My, I'll tell you what it probably is, actually, is because I'm sat right in front of the matchless, so I can hear a lot of the chime oh, on the top right. of the ma- matchless, and I can hear the fender filling in a lot of the lower mids. Yeah, okay. But it might just be because they're more dominant in the matchless. Sure. In any case, they're being very complementary. Yeah. They are doing very different jobs. Yeah. Seems. And, and for me, the two-amp thing, mm. I just... I can pretty much put any two amps together... And enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. So, but from all the work that we've done here, for me, that's that that pairing is just. And they're magic. running all the time. You're not turning one off and one no. on. They are literally just dual monoing all the time. All the time. Yeah, all the time. So, another uh, thing that's running all the time, very inspired by our dear friend Andy Timmons. So when he was here. And he was showing us how he uses his delay on an expression pedal. Yep. Right? And he just dials in the the amount of delay that he wants per sound. I'm doing a ridiculous version of that. Okay? So, my the last two loops on G3, I've got a set up stereo. And I have my auto BIM my 12-bit delay, going into the CXM 1978. So they are on together in a stereo loop. Okay. Okay. So it's reverb and delay. Reverb and delay. But I've got it on an expression pedal. So with the expression pedal... It literally never gets old. So what you can't see just out of shot is Dan's foot doing that on an expression pedal. So there you go. See the mix? Yeah. All right. So... With the mix down, I get this. Just And it's a very subtle bit of delay, but then when I turn the mix up... Can you just give us a very definite yep. chord on and off so we can just hear it all? Where's the modulation coming from predominantly? From the delay. From the delay, yeah. Yeah. It, the, the, it's just the it's most, fantastic. It's, yeah, yeah. I just love it. <laughs> so what that means is when I'm going through the game stages or when I'm in a solo or whatever, I can adjust that on the fly. And I've come to really love having an expression pedal to do various jobs, but specifically for reverb and delay, so I can change the sounds and the presets, but that expression pedal is always going to be controlling the mix level of the reverb and delay. But wasn't that just the... sounded like it was just the reverb. No, no. So turn the reverb off. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't get rid of the delay completely. It just turns it down. Just turns it down because yeah, there's, yeah, a, yeah. there's a minimum I want. I can set the yeah. minimum and maximum. And like, so th- that is my minimum reverb and delay. And it's still there, yeah. but just a little bit. Cause I don't want to dry completely. Yeah, I don't, okay. Like this, if I want to dry, I just turn it off. But yeah. I'd never really want that. There's no reverb in the amps. Yeah, yeah. The amps are both really dry. And just to explain that, so both of the um, the CXM78 reverb, the white pedal, and the green and blue pedal, the delay, they're hooked up uh, using MIDI to G3, mm-hmm. and the expression pedal is hooked up to G3, and G3 is delivering the MIDI messages where it needs to go. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I know. Um, and I, I, I know how much you love MIDI. I really love <laughs> using MIDI. Yeah. Uh, and you know it is uh, it's a pain in the butt but once you yeah once you get it together it's amazing it is it is amazing so 
that is like a, as far as a core tone is concerned, that little yeah. bit of reverb and delay is always on, and then I can change it. Okay, so you'll right? be hearing that throughout the rest of the video. Yes, indeed. Um, but now, for now, I'll turn it off, and so we can have a look at the gain stages. So, the first gain stage, this little pedal over here, this is a pre Thorpey Thorpey. Oh. So, back in the day, uh, I knew Thorpey as uh, Thorpey that lived just around the corner from me, and someone said, "Oh, this guy makes amazing pedals. If there's anything that you want, get him to make you one." And I'd always wanted a Red Llama, but I, I, the the way huge ones were just impossible to find at that time. Okay. So Thorpey made me his take on a Red Llama. Yep. Using that huge great centipede indeed chip thing. Yep. I'm probably over over exaggerating there, but it, it's long and thin. <laughs> it's the Be end sure, of a long day. But at least it's thin. <laughs> so, so the way I use this is overdrive all the way off. Yep. And then I just use it as sort of a crunchy boost. Boosty, so, boosty. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> What this is about is the way it cleans up. Sorry for my ham-fisted switching. I can only understand on-off. I can't understand on and then something else on. It doesn't. It just does not compute for some reason. Um, yeah. So what this thing is about is the way it cleans up. It's just. I just think it's a really beautiful dynamic low gain drive, and I've been. I've tried everything, and for me, it just. Ha it just has what I'm after for that. Like super dynamic. Yeah. Really, really like nice. it. Nice, so that's stage one. That's stage one. Stage two is the harlot. So we go on from here. It is so beautiful. It doesn't suck. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so over the moon with it. <laughs> Um, What's nice is that red is coming through loud and clear through all of that. So you might find any number of overdrives that really cloak everything, yeah. compress too much, yes. and, and you lose the kind of essence. But there's no sense that red, it's a very dynamic guitar. It has really extended high high end, and none of that's getting lost through either of those things. No. Very nice. Yeah, no, no, it's great. The next gain stage and I've just put this on this morning because Mick and I filmed the show on the on the SD9 this morning, and I just I heard this and just went, "Whoa, mama!" <laughs> so <laughs> had a, Dan had a bit of an SD9 revelation. Yeah, was, which the SD9 fans out there have been waiting for for about four years now. So uh, the day has arrived, all you lot. Okay, <laughs> so we go from this. <laughs> Just in case anyone's wondering, it's the Analog Man mod, not the silver mod, the basic mod. Isn't that lovely? It's great. I'm really... It's really, really great. But I love... It's a good rock noise. It's a great rock noise, and it's different to the Harlot. The Harlot's got that, it's a bit softer, it's got a bit more mids in it. That's just like a, a rock machine thing, which I love. And it's a sound that I would normally get by boosting the Harlot, but what I found is... I'll just get too much mids. Mm. And especially with this rig, I've already got a lot of mids. 
I just think that sits on a really lovely place with this. What would be an example of where you would use the harlot and where you would use the Maxon? Uh, Maxon. <laughs> so if I'm doing... Um, so the harlot for me is something where I can play rhythm and lead at the same time because of those mid characters, right? So like, for example... <laughs> Whereas the SD9 is like flat out balls to the wall. There is definitely less lower mids in there. Yeah. So it sounds slightly rockier. It sounds slightly rockier and also with a vocal over the top of that. I was about to say, when I'm singing, how do you turn down? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'll do. Or when you're singing, some... for that matter. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm pretty loud. I yeah, wouldn't yeah. be this loud normally at a gig, but you know, <laughs> it's it's pretty glorious. But the other thing with the SD9, so I've basically hang on, hang on. Did you just say you wouldn't be that loud at a gig? Uh, no, I would be. Play that again. Play that sound again. <laughs> Having done lots of gigs with you, you'd be up from there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So I'd be up from there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also, because, like, I've got the, the overdrive basically dialed right back yeah. on the SD9. Do watch the SD9 show, by the way. It's uh, It was a revelation for, for both of us in yeah, a big way. totally. Yeah. But I can then, I can still boost into the SD9. And one thing that I'm finding as a boost which I am loving, is this diamond compressor. Oh, wow. So if I go back to the clean sound, and I throw the compressor in, Subtle but night, lovely, really lovely. Really beautiful. And it's got that EQ control on there so you can get some top end going. Mm -hmm. You know, from the sublime to the ridiculous. So if I go to the SD9 and then I kick the compressor on. <laughs> Really cool. Isn't that awesome? Tell you what's cool. It almost it, it, it simultaneously uh helps the attack of the note. Yeah. And maybe it's doing that by just starving the front end of the max on a tiny bit. Sure. And then following up, depending on how fast the attack is in the comp. And yet it's fatter as well. Yeah. It's clearer and fatter. Yeah. Not quite it's sure a magic how that works. thing. I'm I'm actually using that in place of a trouble booster. So check this out, because the treble booster was only ever to boost gain stages, mm. right? The treble booster into clean amps is a, just a disaster. What I've found using, so the, I mean, the amount of compression is turned back, mm. right? It's not, not overly compressing. I've got a little bit of an EQ tilt. I can actually use that on its own, like the compressed, the, as a compressor, that it's just so beautiful with clean tones. So, you know, just a standard clean tone I've got here with just the compressor and the the delays. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Welcome to Jazz Club. Uh, lovely. Isn't it beautiful? It really is. Yeah. It really is. When we were at uh, filming with Johnny Ma and we're talking about compressors and he, he said, oh, yeah, the diamond compressor is his magic thing. And I thought, oh, yeah, I remember playing it years ago and liking it. Let's have a look. I put on the board as like, oh, wow. Do you know what kind of compressor it is? Out of uh, optical. It's optical. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'm I'm over the moon with that. I'm, and being able to use it in place of a trouble booster means that I'm not taking up a loop for something just to uh, complement my gain tones. It, you know, as far as a clean boost and everything, it's just glorious. So I'm really, really pleased with it. So we've got... Um, minimum overdrive, medium overdrive, more overdrive, and boost for all of the above. Indeed. Uh, Fuzz? I'm so glad you asked. So, this is very interesting. I've had the Analog Man Sunface on my board for years and years and years. And I love it. It's my favorite fuzz face type thing. But recently, I've made an acquisition. That acquisition... Is this. Oh, that kind of acquisition. So, <laughs> this is a 1962 uh, Les Paul SG. So, SG shape, but it was still called Les Paul back in 1962. And I am absolutely in love with this guitar. It is pretty mega. We were playing it. Paul Stacey dropped in earlier with Dan Coggins, funnily enough. And uh, which was very nice. And uh, we were having a little pass around of the guitar and it was... Was, was yeah. It does not suck. No, it doesn't. Guitar. It doesn't. So I'm, I'm delighted to become its its latest custodian. But one thing is with the humbuckers, a traditional fuzz face style fuzz, it's challenging to get those to work. Mm. So the fuzz that I've gone for is the tacit blue from Thorpey. I'll, I'll tentatively lift this again. Uh, you might be able to just see it peeking down in there. Hello! Um, yeah. Now, it's, it is a fuzz face style circuit, but it has a very clever bit of circuitry on the input. That robots in disguise. Robots in disguise. <laughs> in Transformers, <laughs> look at you! <laughs> so, exactly that. So, there's a transformer on the input, and no matter what you plug into it, it's always going to see the inductance of the core of the transformer, which means that you can plug whatever you like into it. You can plug buffers into it, whatever, and it will work. Yeah, for those of you who may be not entirely following that, if you've got one of these, pretty much the only place it can go, pretty much, is first in line. Yeah. Pretty much. If you put it somewhere in the middle of your effects chain, it becomes a disaster for all kinds of boring reasons. And we, we've made many shows on that. But Thorpey's put a transistor in the tacit blue. The transformer, yeah. To, what did I say? Transistor. Yeah, that's the other thing. <laughs> the other thing you put in. <laughs> there are, there, there's at least two of those in there as well. Um, th he's put the transformer in to mitigate that whole problem. Yeah. And it's, Actually, you know. Not, not just mitigate, to solve it. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it's, yeah, it's, when we, when we heard it on the show a couple of weeks ago, I was just blown away. Mm. It sounded absolutely amazing. I'm interested to hear the bottom end response. Yeah, okay. So.
That's killer. So the, the killer thing about it is you hear that with the, the humbuckers. I, uh, sorry for fiddling with Dan's knobs there, but I just wanted to hear how much more fuzz it had. I was surprised. I thought it would have more fuzz than that. Yeah, but so the way that I generally use my fuzz is on top of overdrive. Yeah, yeah. So if we, the really cool thing is now we hear that with the, the single coil. <laughs> That sounds really monster. Doesn't lose any definition. Doesn't lose any definition. And so, which, what was first, the fuzz or the overdrive? Fuzz. Fuzz is always first. So fuzz is pre. Uh, fuzz is in the auxiliary loop before everything else. Right. That's the bit I was slightly confused about. But you've just explained it. Happy days. Mm -hmm. um, so I, no matter what guitar I pick up, I can always throw the fuzz on with it. Yeah. That's always going to sound monster. I'm just blown away with that thing. It's really great. Really, really it sounded sounded. Mega with both guitars. Yeah, exactly uh, that. For those of you who uh, like to dabble with fuzz and maybe have a bunch of different guitars, it can be a challenge to get that fuzz to sit with something as diverse as a, a Tele and a Les Paul or a Tele and an SG. Yeah. Although, as we're discovering, the SG has more in common with the Tele than... It's a, it's a dream find. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, yeah. I'm... It is the Tele Paul. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as we keep saying. Yep. I'm so, so pleased with it. So have we... Have we run the gamut of gain there? So pretty much, yeah. Between the compressor, the fuzz, and those three overdrive pedals, mm. it gives me all the, the, like every sound that I want is just it's under a foot switch somewhere. I, it is actually pretty reserved for you. Yeah, I'm trying to, I think, I think there's enough there. And on the, especially mm. the way that these particular pedals react with the volume pot. Yeah. You know, the the SD9 on the volume pot, an absolute revelation. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, yeah. So, again, check this out, the SD9. It, it almost gets better the more you turn it down, weirdly. <laughs> It gets really good when I turn it off. <laughs> In terms of the cleanup, I mean. It is amazing. Yeah, yeah. For, for a transistor pedal that can deliver so much gain, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that was a revelation. I thought, yeah, I need to, it's, it was the one sound that I wasn't uh, uh, sure of. Normally, I would have put my um, Dan Coggins modded Dean Markley Overlord in that position, uh, but a friend has borrowed it. I need to get it back. However, I'm. That is the sound I was after for that spot. That works. Um, really, I, I love it to bits. It's great. Killer. So from there, I noticed you've uh, to, to to begin the wobbly conversation. Then mm -hmm. Dan and I tend to think in terms of gain, EQ, wobbly, and then time-based effects. Wobbly being any modulation. Uh, I noticed there's a flanger under there. Absolutely. Your favourite flanger. My favourite flanger of all time. My original electric mistress oh, is yes. back on the board. Oh, hang on. There's also another boost under there. And that is in the same loop as the mistress. Okay. I've got the output of the mistress going into the Ronnie James Zio by Source Audio. Because, so normally I would use uh, the post gain in G3 to give it a bit of a bump. But I only have the mistress on one side. I'm only ever going wet, dry, especially with all the modulation stuff, I'm only ever putting it on one side. So I need the mistress to be at least unity. Right. So that, you know, it, 
doesn't get lost completely. Very quick tangent. The, one of the main reasons Dan came up with a uh, effects switcher in this manner is because he acquired a bunch of vintage pedals many, many years ago. We've told this story a lot on TPS, but I'll tell it again briefly. He ends up buying a electric mistress flanger. That electric that mistress. Electric mis uh, a CE1, old big box boss and some other things loops them all together with patch cables in the way that we all would and discovers they pretty much suck when you, well, they literally suck, tone suck when you attach them all together. So what you've done is you've got it in its own loop and mm -hmm. you've added a boost in order to make it... To bring it up to level. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because originally, when I, you know, I love it, but whenever you kicked it in, it dropped mm. out. So, you know, develop the the gain stage pre and post gain to be able to balance that out. But now because I'm... The wet dry thing is so amazing. Yep. What I wanted to do, so I didn't have to go through and program everything up, uh, you know, and and balance stuff. I've just put a booster in the same loop after it to bring it up to level. So when I kick it in on one side, that side just doesn't drop. All right. right. So right. If we hear it, so where is it in the signal chain? Uh, it is. Loop eight. Yeah. Okay. So just be it's the last thing in the chain before the stereo uh, indulgence, right? What I'm doing is I'm splitting the signal path actually before loop five, before all the modulation, all my gain and compression and everything goes up to loop four. Yeah. After loop five, it splits, and then I'm telling loop five, six, seven, and eight what amp I want it to go to, and then. 9 and 10 stereo in here, mm. 7 and 12 stereo in here. There's one of the very cool things about G3 is that you can you can send anything to one amp and some things to both amps, which is quite hard to do because without a, a switching system, you would need to then sum back and all the rest of it. That sorts all that out. So if he wants a flanger in that amp but delay in both, fine. Yeah. yeah. And if you want a flanger in that amp and a harmonic tremolo in that amp, Fine. Yeah. Yeah. So one of one of the things about flanging, as much as I love it, I've found over the years that actually, I, I, as much as I love it, I want to retain part of the direct signal, mm. right? So what happens if I just, you know, go for my clean sound and then kick the flanger on, and then I kick the flanger on, and you hear all the glorious, extraneous, uh, noisy temperament of an old electric mistress. There it is. There it is. But that's the matchless. There's no noise there. And we hear this. There's Dan. Isn't it amazing? There's Dan. It's like, <laughs> it's the mistress. Yeah. Man. Oh, it's just, it's so good. It is but the good. other, the other amazing thing about the mistress is the way it works with overdrive. So if I go with the harlot.
if we hear that... Have you got it post overdrive then? Uh, yes. Oh, well. Yeah, I do. Dan normally runs his uh, flanger before overdrive, but here it's after, into one amp. So, exactly. So if we hear it, flanger into both amplifiers. <laughs> So I'm, I can kick that on anywhere. I, I really hope it comes through in the recorded audio. It is immeasurably, infinitely better wet dry than it is into both amps. Yeah, it t totally is because yeah. I'm not, I'm not, it's not detracting from anything. It's adding. Yeah. Um, it's not overbearing. And so one of the things why I used to have it before the game stages, I found it, it stopped, it integrated more into the sound, which was really cool. But actually having it after split. And because it's not going into one amp, it's more like it's integrated. Exactly. Because the other amp isn't isn't flanging. Exactly that. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So sounds killer. Yeah. That so I I'm over the moon with that. Next wobble. Uh next wobble, we have the Dino Vibrato. This has been on my board forever. It's not going anywhere. It's the it's it's a magical thing. So if we hear the diamond vibrato into just one amplifier, and that's this time it's going into the matchless. Now if I stick on the second amplifier. Sounds absolutely massive. We've talked about it many, many times on the show, and anyone who's been to an experience day, you'll know this because you'll have stood in the room and heard it. That's real chorus. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. what's happening in a JC120. Yeah. And there's times that I want the bright attack of the flanger. There's times that I want the warm wobble of the vibrato. So yeah. at the moment, if I'm not mistaken, the flanger's coming out of that amp and the vibrato out of this amp. Yeah, depending on come what. On, come on, put them both on. Come on, come on. Okay. Come on! All right, so.
Sorry, I was just getting carried away with the monk there. So monk's only going to one amp as well. Yeah, have I, yeah. Have the, all the modulation will only ever go to one amp. I mean, I, oh, I can, for a specific sound, if what I need is a, if I need tremolo on both sides, I can, I can do that. No you problem. can do it, yeah. yeah. But what I love about that is that I've got, I can add wobble without losing the weight, without it being overly uh, affected, if that makes sense. I can add the, the character that I want, but keep the core tone of it. So I'm really, really pleased with that. That is the, the jewel in the wet-dry cr yeah. crown, isn't it? Yeah. It's being able to do exactly that. Okay. Uh, before we move on to Crazy Town, <laughs> will you always use the same parameters in the uh, BIM and the no. CXM? No. So I can... The expression pedal will always control the effect level. The effect level, yep. But depending on what sound I'm on, I can send different program changes to that. So it might be that for some, uh, for a sound, I don't want the uh, the plate. I might want, oh, let's go, actually, let's try this. <laughs> so, there you go. It's everything I've ever wanted in a reverb pedal. I've never heard better. It's big and, you know, that's the, having a big board like this is like, okay, I need to make a decision. Am I willing to carry around a board like this? As long as my drummer is willing to wheel his drums into rehearsal every week and load them out and not whinge about it, I'm happy. You're happy. Yeah, totally. It's worth it. It's worth the carry. Having the flexibility for me, you know, for some people, they need simpler, uh, they have simpler requirements for reverb. But for me, I get so much uh, texture out of that as opposed to trying to get it all from delay. Yeah, yeah. It's the WYSIWYG nature it's, of it for it's me. It's amazing. But the, the lights on the five buttons there, plus the position of the faders, lets you know exactly what's happening at all times and yeah. that is such a great such a great thing about the CXM one of the reasons we love it so yeah okay then so finally you have incorporated the LVX I have indeed so the LVX I've had this for a while I've dipped my toe in and I've come back and you know I've kept dipping my toe in it wasn't until we had an experience day of like last year um, that we had a gentleman in who had one on his board. Simon, I say Simon. Was Simon. Right Simon. Simon. Hi, Simon, if you're yeah, watching I've this. got a bit of footage of Simon actually doing his thing on the RVX. And I heard what he was doing and it's like, oh, got it. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> so the LVX for me has replaced the H9. It's a couple of amazing things. Analog dry through, which is like, as soon as I don't have that, everything's doesn't work. Yeah, because you were using the H9 wet only, weren't you? Yeah. And then wet dry, so it didn't really matter. Yeah, exactly. Or did you have a wetter no, box? No, no, I was only ever sending it to one amplifier. Yeah, so it, was, it kill dry, which gets rid of the latency problem in having a pedal with no analog dry through. Yeah. 
and I was only ever using it for harmony stuff. Yeah. This can take me to other places, right? So the eighth dimension, for the, example. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you mean fifth? There you go. That's how much my eyes don't work. I thought it said dimension. So if I, um, what I'll do, I'm going to turn this off now. So we're just going to hear the LVX, mm -hmm. okay? And these are, I've got the LVX on an expression pedal. The other expression pedal, I can assign to the LVX. I can assign to, I can use it as a volume pedal, whatever. But for the moment, I'm just, it's just on the LVX. And the LV, expression pedal plugged in the LVX is really powerful. So the LVX will do, it does clever harmonized stuff. It, it does. It will do all the basic delays as well, by the way. It doesn't, the, the delays in it are amazing. For my standard, just standard delay that I have on all the time. Yeah. The BIM is the best standing delay yeah. I've ever heard. Yeah. It's just, I, I love everything about it. And I've been talking to, uh, Dennis, and and they've done a um, uh, an upgrade to be able to do tap tempo via MIDI. Oh, brilliant! So under the each foot switch, I can just have a just tap it in, and it'll you know. Explain that again when you when you say under each foot switch. Oh, okay. So for every preset that I've got, yeah, I can also send out a tap tempo message to via MIDI to anything. How do you tell it to do tap tempo and not change a preset? Um, well, if I go to a preset yep. right here, yep. okay, I just the, in in here there's a little thing that says tap tempo. And I go on that, and I can send out tap tempo information to four different devices via MIDI, so that when I'm on that preset, I can just tap the preset, and it sends out tap tempo. Wow! And it won't change the preset until you press another preset. Exactly. Far out. So. You know, getting things in time is really important. For me, though, that basic delay in the auto it almost has the utility of a tape delay. Yeah. It just sits there, does that thing I really like. Yeah, yeah. You, it's not a specific... You're not using it as a rhythmic effect. No. It, it just is the 
yeah, the ambience, as yeah. it were. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So between the well, like with the LVX, would take care of the of the lion's share of anything I need to do that is uh, normal. Well, the LVX. Sorry, the LVX. Oh, so the LVX. Yeah, the LVX will be the the non-normal yes, stuff. The abnormal. So the abnormal harmonies. Yeah. Um, uh, out there, multi-tap, modulated, yeah, all that pitch stuff. Pitch shifted. Yeah. Reverbs, delays, well, delays. Yeah, and like filters as well. Like the filters here are, are, are amazing. Um, if I. That level of confident button pushing there tells me he has actually learned it. So yeah. Once you get that dialed in. Yeah, man, it's it's just it's awesome. I'm I I love it. Sonically, it is exceptional. Like all Maris stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But that the thing for me is the analog drive through. Yeah, it makes yeah. all the difference in the world. So I suppose the the question the, the next begging question is what about the Mercury X then? As well. I well. <laughs> Remembering that Maris did the algorithms in the CXM. Yeah. Right? The Mercury X is incredible, but I don't need to go where that goes. Yeah, yeah okay. I've, everything that I need that take that goes out there in the yeah. uh, textural world is in the LVX. It's the most astonishing thing. Um, and then when I want to add all the other pads and things, stick on the CXM and it's just, it's just amazing. It's very cool. It's... Uh... <laughs> I guess we all have different yardsticks for this, don't we? By Dan's standards, this is considerably simpler than I thought it was going to be. Okay. And that might speak volumes for the functionality of the pedals you've chosen. Sure. To a lot of other people, it might seem like the Starship Enterprise, but, you know, you're watching this, you'll know if you run three pedals in a, in a one spot or if you've got 85 pedals and three G3s, you exist. Um, <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> uh, or maybe not 85 pedals. Once we've done the gigs, mm -hmm. I think we should reconvene briefly. Okay. And sh and sort of show where this got to. Absolutely. Because at the moment, it's all a bit, I could I've do this, it. I could do yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I could do that. But What actually, am I actually going to end up doing with once it? Once we've done the gigs, yeah. it'll be like, no, this is what I actually used this for. Yeah. But it's killer, man. I mean, it's hard to imagine anything you couldn't do on there. No. It has to start sonically mm. with just the amps dialed in and hearing this. Yeah. And I'm the the core tone of these amps I'm so happy with. Yeah, it really works. Um and I can hear the guitars, it's great. Then, you know, the just I mean, just choosing the gain stages has is you know, and nothing's set in stone, but I'm so happy mm. with the way that each guitar sounds through each one. The way that it interacts with the volume part is beautiful. Yeah, and it is. It's probably worth saying neither neither Dan nor I, apart from the fuzz, which is a different thing. Neither of us use high gain in any sort of modern sense. No, don't go anywhere near it. No, the closest the... I've heard it like the Maxon. Yeah, but it's very tonal and dynamic, and like singing over a, a massive sound, it can be tough, mm. but I can see how that's going to work. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll find out, won't we? Yeah, we will. <laughs> well, okay. I think all that is left to do is for you to play us out then. Okay. And uh, dial up some sounds and let's see where, let's see where it can take us. Okay. Tell you what is interesting. Once it starts getting down to business, look what guitar he's playing. Yeah. And that will never change, will it? Never. But the SG is fantastic and it will come out and it will do its job. It's a very worthy addition. But once we start getting, getting to business, mm -hmm. it's always this guitar, isn't yeah. it?
It is. It is. Uh, it's just very nice to see. So well, I know. It's, it's very so nice well. to see. Yeah, and it matches the harlot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or if you're colour blind, it matches the diamond vibrato. <laughs> Nice. Tell it was amazing. The fuzz was on right until the end. Yeah. And you had that lovely clean, the lovely clean chime. It's just, yeah. I, I'm, yeah, it's just. Was the compressor on, can you remember? Yeah, at some points, yeah. Yeah, yeah. At the end, maybe? I can't remember. Uh, the screen will tell the, the screen will tell the story. Yeah. Nice one, mate. Yeah. Thank you. It's, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. It's, I've just got everything set up so I can just, you know, at the moment, this is set up so I can just throw things on and make noises. 
I'll, then, then I'll start programming songs in and get specific sounds for songs, etc. But I'm just so, so pleased with it. It's the, it's the happiest I've ever been with a pedal board. Until the next one. Until the next one. But th at this point, at this point, it's the happiest I've ever been. <laughs> Why would we be doing that if that wasn't the case? Indeed. Right? Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. No. Cool. Thank you for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that little uh, tour through Dan's pedal board there. Like I say, we will uh, follow up either just before or just after the gigs to say this is how it actually panned out um, in terms of sounds that were programmed in. But yeah, please go to that Pedal Show store and buy merch. Indeed. It's, it's the main way we support the show. It is indeed. Uh, go to patreon.com, that Pedal Show, if you want to uh, support us in that way. That's also very helpful and we're very grateful. Please subscribe. Please click down. And if you see links to places like Anderson's and Pedal Empire, if you buy something via those links, that helps us out as well. Indeed. Thank you for the indulgence. Uh, it's been, I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. It is a pleasure. Because it's such an, op it's, I don't want to say opposite, it's a very different thing than I, than I am into. So it is a, it's a lear both a learning experience and a nice surprise to hear these wonderful noises. Beautiful. Emanating. Oh. I tell you what, I mean, it's loud, but no, nothing hurty there at no, all. No, it's nothing it's, hurty. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. so pleased with it. I said nothing yeah. hurty. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Have a good day. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye.